Good morning. It's December. December 5th, 2021. Christmas around the corner. It doesn't feel like it here in Nashville today. It's it's already in the 60s and it's 11 a.m. Um, and uh, just want to get on and uh, hang out. Talk about some things, answer some questions, say hello. Um, say uh, thanks a lot for the overwhelming response on Dr. Bob's killer kit. Um, it's a drum set that I use all the time, a sample kit, and um, it's yours now. There's a, um, it's pay what you want. You can watch the video about the samples, and um, it's on my channel. And um, there's a link in the description of the video. I may have some links um, in this video for that sample pack. And um, it's just been, it's been awesome. I mean, I use it all the time. So I can't wait to hear what you guys do with it. Um, I've heard uh, a couple people have sent in things that they've used it in so the samples and songs. And it's been fantastic. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to do a little Christmas thing too and start to uh, put some of the samples out that I um, that I add um, to this kit um, in songs if I need to accentuate the snare or the kick or whatever to get um, different tonality um, samples that I add to these drums um, possibly some cymbals coming up um, some other um, cool drum effects anyway Thanks to everyone who has um, been a part of that. Um, I see some people jumping on. Hi from Italy. Wow, how freaking cool is the internet, man? Howdy from Toronto, North Carolina, and Arizona. I mean, and I'm in Tennessee. Amazing. Hi, you guys. Thanks for, uh, for uh, jumping on this morning. I hope. Your, your world is beautiful where you are this morning and everyone else that joins on. Um, I want to talk about, uh, I'm going I'm to talk about a few things um, and then um, answer some questions. But I want to talk about musical crutches. And wow, and hi from Norway. Is this, this is killer, man. What a great community. I'm so lucky to be a part of this. Anyway. Musical crutches, we all have them, I have them. They're things that we, we lean on because we know they work. They're go-to things that we go to because uh, we're stuck or we know um, it will get us unstuck. They are um, habits that we form uh, that become a part of us that um, that are hard to break um, and that we sometimes don't even see that they need to be broken. Um, crutches can be a good thing and crutches cannot be a good thing. Um, let me explain a few things that I'm going after this morning when I talk about this. I talk and. Everything I'm talking about on this channel, I'm a student of all this as much as anyone else. I'm scouring the internet. I'm talking to all my friends all week long how to learn and get better all this stuff like anyone else. Um, I, wish, I watch Rick Beato. I watch Tim Pierce. I watch videos of great players, and I watch Produce Like a Pro. I, I'm, I mean, I'm as hungry as everyone else, so don't think for a minute that I've got a handle on all this. I've been doing it a long time, so I've got some experience and have made more mistakes than you, but hopefully you've corrected more mistakes than you. But let me talk about what I view as a huge crutch for songwriters. And if you're not a songwriter, you should be. Um, but if you're a mixer or an engineer, hang on. I'm going to get to you too. But um, hang on. Don't worry, I'm not going to play this much, this video, because I'm terrible. But... When I... When people pick up an instrument that they're 
proficient at or they're good at, their hands start to play that instrument like they do. They become a product of all their influences and that gives them their identity on their instrument and that's why people call them to get hired. Um, I do not have a guitar identity. I am a guitar hack, but I can play enough to write. So when I pick up a guitar to write, I might start to... play guitar things. You know, what we do, a guitar player. You get what I'm saying? Now, Maybe I should have tuned it before this video. Um, if I'm a songwriter and I'm a guitar player, then when I pick up a guitar, my songs are probably going to be dictated around how I am as a guitar player. My guitar talent, when I start to come out with chord changes or um, chord progressions or a riff or whatever, that's going to probably dictate the kind of song that I write because that's what I do. I'm a guitar player. I pick up a guitar and that's what happens. Now, if I'm a keyboard player, I'm probably going to write a song that if I play keyboards, I might sit down on a keyboard and this happens. So you get what I'm saying. I'm going to write that kind of song. I'm a keyboard player. Maybe that's a kind of, I'm, I'm going to play a ballad and that's my thing is going to be based around that. That's what I do. Those are positive things because that's how you approach your songwriting. That's how you approach your craft. But let me also, let me throw this at you. Those can also be your biggest crutch because you're limiting your songwriting to your guitar talent, to your piano talent. There's other songwriters that will come up with a beat and just start to freestyle. And I don't mean just rap, I mean melody. I don't know where you came from, but I like it, like it. I don't know what I'm gonna do, I'm born, but I don't like it. I don't wanna do, I don't own that, I don't wanna do, I don't own that, I don't know where do you come from, but I like it, but I like it, like it, whatever. And that's their approach to a song. A beat, and they freestyle, and they fill in the chords later. What my challenge is to everyone and to myself is, Set your guitar down, set your beat to the side, set any of your programming and, and your, your piano to the side and switch. If you're a piano player, go to guitar. If you're a guitar player, go to piano. If you're a beat guy, go to any one of those. Now you might say, well, I don't play piano. I don't play guitar. That's fine. Because one of the greatest songwriters that ever lived was named Diane Warren. She still, I mean, she still lives. Um, and she would play bass notes on the piano and write the melody around that. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Like that. So, 
what that does is that gets you out of your comfort zone. It gets you out of your crutch of being, of your approach to songwriting, to to what you do, and it opens your, your, your vocabulary. It Because what we do, I mean, is, is we're, you know, we're all producers and mixers and programmers and players. What everything we do is in service of the song. No one wants to hear our cool track except each other. My wife doesn't want to hear my cool track or my bad track or my good track or whatever track I'm coming up with. My wife wants to hear what goes on top of it. She wants to hear the melody. She wants to hear the lyrics. So does the rest of the world. So everything we do underneath that melody and those lyrics is in service of those lyrics and of that melody. Now, obviously, we want it to be as cool and, and, and wonderful and everything that we ever dreamed of because that's our passion. And it's okay if all of that stuff has an identity without the um, melody in the lyric. I mean, much of the, if you took Sting's voice off the police, a police song, I could tell you that that was the police, even if I'd never heard the song before. If you took Shania Twain's vocal off of a, one of her tracks, and if it's a song I would never, I've never heard, I would know that Mutt did that, or Mutt didn't do that. So it's really important what we do underneath it. But let me stress to you that what we get comfortable at in, the, in our approach, it's okay to change that, and it's really necessary to change that because new ideas will come up. If you're a guitar player and you're playing riffs and all that, and your singer in your band or you are used to hanging lyrics and melody over the top of that, then you're still in a box of how creative your guitar playing is. I, I, lots of times, I'll be driving down the road. I, don't, I, I never listen to the radio in my car anymore. I, I leave the road for silence. And a lot of times, I'll just... I'll be silent, I'll be still, I'll be in the moment, and maybe some melody will start to come to me, and I'll record it in my phone. And it's not even really coming with the chords yet, or maybe not with the words, or maybe just a few words. And I don't know how that process happens, and I'm not going to ask how it happens. We're all lucky to have it. But don't let your limited talent or even your wonderful talent at the instrument of your choice dictate everything you do. Try a different way because it's it's a wonderful thing you have and a crutch. Now, for you mixers and engineers, same thing. The next song you mix, don't use any effect that you have before. All of your delays, all of your chorusing, all of your reverbs, Change them. Go to your plugins. Find out what you have there that you haven't used before or haven't used in 10 years that's just been sitting there and change it up and make those new things work. Don't go to your template. Don't go. I mean, we all now listen. I know sometimes things are um, we have to do things in a timely manner. Don't do it on one of those. If you've got a deadline tomorrow, finish your mix, man, or women or girls or whoever's out there mixing finish your mix get it done but let me challenge you you're not you're not going to change your sound up or you're not going to grow if you keep using uh the h delay on everything you do or the uh the uh emt 140 plate um, on everything you do or, you know what, change your master bus up. You know, if you don't, if you've never used the Focusrite Red Slate uh, compressor, try that. Um, if you've never used Ozone, try it. You know, you know you, there's lots of these things you can demo. You don't, you don't have, if you love it, then you can buy it. If not, don't get it. But you're never going to know how much better you can be 
and unless you try something new. And man, I'm, I'm talking in the mirror when I say that because we all get into our habits, we get into our ways, we get stuck in our ways, and a lot of our ways are good. They've gotten us to where we're at. But keep going, keep going. Write a song with one, with your index finger playing the bass notes and come up with a melody. Um, write a song by yourself if you're used to collaborating with other people. Um, write a song, change it up. Um, hey, Aaron, hey, thanks for reminding me, Aaron. Hey, go check the link out that Aaron just sent, Aaron, uh, Dr. Bob's Killer Drum Kit. Um, hey, there's something new to try. You don't. I guarantee you don't have these samples because I'm the only person that does. Well, not anymore. A lot of people have gotten them on this. But check them out. They're a big part of my life. I use them on everything I do. I, I do. Um, I add samples to them sometimes, depending on the song. Um, enhance samples or I tune them differently or whatever. But try them out. I promise you, um, you're going to love them. They're pay what you want. They're pay what you want and... It's some of my best stuff. It's on the list of my best stuff. So thanks to everyone that's out there that's gotten them and um, been a part of it. Um, so back to the crutch thing. Now, I'm going to stay on topic, but I'm going to get a little bit off here and because I think it's important. Life and music, for those of us who are on here and are addicted to it um, or are lucky enough to be addicted to it and many times are one and the same. Our, our, our life and our surroundings and our environment and our, fa our family and friends influence our music and in turn our music influences what we do and other what other people do. Um, I've found many times in life, I I have crutches outside of music. Thought patterns, behavior patterns, worry patterns, um, de jealousy patterns, defense patterns, um, excuse patterns, um, things that I fall back on and use a crutch. Um, they didn't like my production. Well, what do they know? They're dated anyway. Um, they passed on my song. Well, um, I don't really like their music anyway. Um, I don't... Um, I don't... I'm not proud that these are behaviors that I've had in the past or thoughts that I still have sometimes. But... Look at the crutches outside of your music, too. Things you think, ways you treat people, um, patterns that you developed. Why, why do I wake up in the morning and my mind starts spinning about everything I need to do today? Why do I do that? Is that a good thing or is that a crutch? Well, it's a good thing because, you know, it gets my mind in order and makes lists and I know what I need to do. Well, yeah, but... Is it with a sense of urgency or a sense of um, anxiety? Or is it a sense of calm and, oh, cool, great. I get, I get to do all this today, and I'll find a way to fit it in, and that's great. Now, these are just a few. I'm on the spot here because you're all watching. These are just a few little examples that I'm thinking of that maybe things that I do. Maybe things that you do, too. But take a look at your life. And what things do you use? What excuses do you use? What um, music's too hard and you know, I'm going to get out of it. Is that a crutch or is that how you really feel and you're ready to move on? Um, um, starting your YouTube or starting a new YouTube channel or putting my putting my music on online. is just uh, I don't know how people are going to hear it and I don't know how all that works. So why, why would I ever do that? Yeah. Is that an excuse and a crutch so you don't have to worry about failing or are you really not interested in it? And, you know, I don't have the answers for you. And half the time I don't have the answers for me. But take a look at things in your life that could be crutches. 
just like the things in your songwriting, your mixing, your playing. Um, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't want to learn a bebop beat. I, I'm a rock drummer. Yeah, but what about learning a bebop beat could add to your rock playing, add to the sense of time, the sense of push that a bebop um, player plays when they play that kind of music. I don't want to learn to read music. That, that just, you know, that's for, that's for, you know, studio sausage guys, you know, it might affect my playing. Yeah, is that true? Or are you just, are you just um, intimidated by learning the craft of reading? And so take a look at these crutches in your life. I'm looking at mine every day and I don't have any of this down, but I just thought I'd pass that on as well as the music stuff, you, um, if you get something out of it, great. Um, if you think I'm crazy, great. Um, but that was kind of what hit me this morning and this week, uh, about what I wanted to say. And, um, uh, again, check out the, uh, Dr. Bob's killer drum kit thing. There's a link there. Aaron has put up a link. Uh, I did a, a video about it and, um, there's a link in the description of that video too. They're incredible samples and now they're yours. Um, also, um, I put a great video out this week about um, Mutt Lang. Uh, did he audition 82 snares? Really audition 82 snares for a Shania's biggest record? I mean, did he really? Um, go watch and find out. But there's also um, one of the most important drum and mix lessons in that video that ever, ever, um, that you can basically um, build your architecture of your entire mix and song and track on. So check it out. I think it was valuable. It's been valuable for me. Um, I know it's Mutt Lang again. Man, what's this guy's deal with Mutt? Well, Mutt always think, thinks out of the box. Um, whether you like his stuff or not, he um, revolutionized the way records are made and he thinks out of the box and um, his attention to detail and patience are unequaled. So yeah, that's why I think he's great. And I bet you do too. Um, let me ask, let me ask some, uh, answer questions. If anybody's got anything. Um, hi from New Orleans. Hi, Anthony, Mark Robinson, Mutt's the man. I totally agree with you there. Um, I remember, uh, Mutt Lang is the best, Anthony. I remember hearing records when I was young and going, why does Drive by the Car sound so amazing? Why does Photograph by Def Leppard sound so amazing? Why? And I'd look and I'd start to see this guy's name and the rest is history. Um, OCD. Oh, absolutely. I've heard he does have that. Um, sometimes that's a good thing. Um, has been for him. I mean, if he has it, I, I, I don't know that he does, but I've heard that, I've heard that he could, um, for me not to judge. Um, Shane Phipps. Hey, Shane. I went to school with Shane. If a song I've written makes me feel good, it was time well spent. I totally agree. Change it up, Shane. Uh, what's your approach? Whatever your approach is to writing, break it. Try something new. Um, that's what I'm doing over here. Um, also I had, um, perfection is the greatest curse. Well, I agree, uh, cause we'll never hit it, but, um, perfect. I think, uh, the groove on Rolling Stones records is perfect. I think the groove on John Mellencamp's records is perfect. I think the groove on, um, Hysteria by Def Leppard is perfect. Perfect. I think Rosanna by Toto is perfect. So there's a lots of different kinds of perfect. Um, what kind of perfect makes you tick or what kind of perfects make you tick? And even more so, what kind of perfect does the song that you're working on need to have? Um, those are big, um, those are big questions, but, um, you'll find it. You'll find it. Keep looking. Um, I had a couple questions come in on the email this week. Let me see if I can find them here. Um, 
Yes. Um, what is your favorite virtual base um, or fake base? Um, I love IK Multimedia's fake base. I mean, I mean, fake base that sounds like a real base, not like a Moog base or a synth base. Um, multi, uh, IK Multimedia makes a great one, and Easy Base. I use those two um, quite a lot. Um, quite a lot. And, and, and I love this. I love them both. Um, Sinners Rise, Dr. Bob, I have a super specific question about a plugin. Have you used Howard Benson's vocals? And also, wouldn't a Howard Benson vocal sound actually be a CLA vocal sound? I've not used the Howard Benson vocal plugin. I know what one you're talking about. Uh, is it by Joey Sturge? Oh, what's the guy's name? Um, I can't remember. Uh, no, I've not used it. I've seen videos about it, and it looks fantastic. And yes, most of what Howard Benson has done that you've ever heard is mixed by Chris Lord Algae. So yes, you would really be in, emulating a Chris Lord Algae vocal sound. And that's not to take away from the plugin because it looks awesome. Um, but I, um, if you want the CLA vocal sound, that plugin's probably great. Um, yes, Joey Sturgis tones. Exactly. And Joey's got some great stuff. Go check out his plugins. Exactly. Um, Chris Lord Algae has a vocal waves, vocal plugin kind of thing with lots of sliders and faders and stuff like that, that sounds fantastic. Also, his 1176 Blue Stripe Waves Compressor sounds fantastic. Um, you know, he's known for SSL, so he, um, any SSL, great SSL channel strip would probably sound like Chris. The Waves one is great. Um, Slate makes one, UAD makes one. So um, I've not used that plugin. I'm sure it's great, but there's other ways to get Chris Lord Algae sound. Um, as mentioned, and all those are great for rock. All those are great for rock. Um, fantastic. Um, another one. Um, where do you live? Uh, yeah, I live, um, I live in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Um, lived here for a long time and, um, I live on Old Hickory Lake. So look it up. It's a great place to live. It's a great place to have a family. Um, and um, I'm very thankful to live here. Uh, Mark Robinson, recently purchased Easy Drummer 2. Wow, a must-have. No affiliation, just a user. Same here. No affiliation with um, um, anything uh, Easy Drummer or Tune Tracks, but I love their stuff. Easy Drummer 2 is great. Superior Drummer 3 is great, and you can use Easy Drummer 2 sounds inside Superior Drummer. Both great. Uh, Radio War. I found that building community around your music is one of the most important ways to head towards making a living in music. You can have great songs, but being personal with fans is so key. Couldn't agree more. Um, that's fans that you go tour um, with. That's fans in your hometown, friends in your hometown engineers, producers, other writers, um, internet friends. Um, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Radio War. Uh, great point. Um, Anthony, how do you feel about ozone and neutron and nectar? Um, I use ozone on almost everything I do on the master bus. I don't think I've used neutron. I get some of the, the their stuff mixed up. There's one that you can clean tracks and, and um, air conditioned noise and all that. I, I've used that one if there's a problem with something. I can't remember which one that is. And Nectar. I, I definitely use Ozone all the time, and I think it's a must-have. Um, Aaron, exact address, please. Aaron, I'll, ex I'll, I'll text you my exact address, and you can send me a check at that address every week. How about that? Sinners Rise. You, you're, thank you. You're welcome. Jim Osberg. It's time to parlay all the mutt talk into an interview with the man himself. He has to give at least one review in this in this lifetime. 
Well, Jim, I don't think that will happen. Um, I have ways to get to him, and I have... There's some things between Mutt and I that I really can't talk about yet. Um, all good, but in in due time, in due time. Uh, yeah, he's very private, and I respect that. Um, and I hope that he feels that just by talking about his music stuff on here that I'm not infringing on that. Um, I hear that he's almost retired, semi-retired, and whatever, so I wouldn't... Why would he care? If, I mean... All you got to do is listen to his music and you can hear all these things he's doing. So it's out there for the world. Um, but no huge fan. And I hear he's a wonderful guy, very disciplined uh, in his sleep and his eating. And he's, uh, he's a teetotaler, all these, I mean, he's very down. He's a very together dude, not just musically. Uh, I know all the stuff about Shania and marriage and all that. I, I, this, this, that stuff will never be on this channel. We're not talking about, the, those things in people's lives. If I could talk about them, then I got to drag my own out in front of all you and no one cares. Um, do you have any, uh, Darren, do you have any opinion or experience with IK Multimedia, Amplitude, and Sample Tank? Um, yes, yes, and yes. Um, I use um, IK Multimedia stuff. I Like I said, I use their bass. I use... Um, some of their plugins. Um, what's the mastering thing? That it, do they do the? Uh, I don't use it on their master stuff, but they have some great emulations, some SSL stuff, 1176 stuff. Amplitude 5, I think, is awesome. Um, check out the uh, Joe Satriani pack for IK Multimedia or for Amplitude. Um, it's got a Rockman in there. And it's the first Rockman that I've heard on a plug-in. And it's wonderful. Um, sample Tank, I used to use it for a piano a long time ago. Or a time ago, And there was a string thing, I think, called Old Tape Strings that sounded great, but I haven't used it for a long time. Um, Sinners Rise again. One more time for me. Sure. Do you Did you do some rhythm guitars and keyboards on the Sounds of Madness, the Shinedown album? I... Yes and no. I co-wrote a song on that record with um, Brent Smith, the singer, called um, Breaking Inside. My son, who was in high school at the time, played um, rhythm guitars on the demo. And one of my best friends, Dale Oliver, played some rhythm guitar stuff on the demo. And I played the key pad, the very pad, first pad you hear in the song. Um, and... Um, when they cut the song in the studio, the producer Rob Cavallo was gracious enough to ask for those demo parts to add to what they've done. Tim Pierce, who's a wonderful guitar player and has a great YouTube channel, played the solo in that song and virtually copied the solo that my friend Dale Oliver played in the demo, note for note. And he called me and told me he did. He's like, why would I want to change that? It was awesome. Changed a few things at the end. But that not only shows you about what kind of player Tim is, is what kind of ego he has. Like, hey, if it sounds great, why, do, why would I ever change it? But they did take um, some acoustic parts, some rhythm parts, and my keyboard part. And that's what you hear on the record along with Tim Pierce. And um, uh, Rob Cavallo was very gracious and paid us well and thanked us in the credits. And my, my son uh, had a really hard time convincing everybody in his high school that he was actually on the new Shine Down album. Um, Nata 77, I have ordered a MacBook Pro with an M1 chip and will be using my da -da 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 mainly to record it. I'm considering Pro Tools. What would be your best uh, of recommendation? Um, I've always used Cubase since the day I started. Um, Tons of my friends use um, Pro Tools. If hmm, that's a hard, that's a hard one. Have you used a DAW before, or are you starting out? They all do the same thing. They're all wonderful. My advice, my best advice to you would be: if you're just working and doing your own music, you could use. Um, 
any DAW that you thought looked cool, that was in your price range, that you thought you had good access to YouTube stuff or a friend to learn. If you're going to be doing a lot of engineering, um, other projects, and you might be taking that MacBook Pro to other studios and and recording, and you um, and you're going to be involved in in more of a community as an engineer. I would probably get Pro Tools because Pro Tools is the most widely used, and it would be better for you to assimilate into the community if you knew that. Now, I don't even know how to turn on Pro Tools, but I mean, I've recorded on it a billion times as a drummer and, you know, a vocal overdub, someone else in engineering and all that. And obviously, all those files and any DAW files are compatible with Cubase because you just render them to zero and import them. Um, so my advice would be probably Pro Tools, but if you're doing mostly stuff yourself, and especially if you're doing a lot of MIDI, I would probably get Cubase. Um, I'd probably get Cubase. Um, Aaron, Dr. Bob's Killer Kit. Yeah, thanks. Guys, check out that link. There's some of my best samples, and they're for sale for what you want to pay. There's a video about it. Um, there's a um, of cool ways to use the samples. But anyway, my best stuff in... They're yours now, so thank you. Um, Sam Hemp, hey there. If someone wants to pitch a song, how much should it be produced? I would imagine these days uh, of a piano vocal demo is long gone. How, but how do you pick a genre? Do you add solos? Um, I'm just going to answer this um, the way that I do it um, and all of my friends do it. Any demo that we do could be released on the radio. It sounds that good. Um, it's that. I don't know that I've done a demo that's under 85 tracks in five years. So, um, because so much of music now is not only the, the lyric and the melody, but the record. Um, and when you pitch a song, someone wants to hear... They want to be blown away like it sounds like like it's already sounds on the radio. Um, now, going back to what I said before, it's really only on what's on the top of that song. that's the most important thing, especially if it's a rock or pop or um, country EDM, stuff like that. It's it can be more about hooks and beats and whatever. But unfortunately, yes, the days of, of a nice piano and vocal or acoustic guitar and vocal to get the song idea across uh, they're gonna play they're gonna play some unbelievable demo before yours that's slamming with everything big and then they're gonna put your little demo on and you're gonna be neutered and I know and I'm with you the point of the whole thing is the melody and the lyrics but times have changed they really want to hear it all to, to they think it's a safer bet when it's all, the whole impact of the song is coming right at them. So, I'll be doing a lot of MIDI stuff. I'll look into Cubase. Yeah, I would do that. I think Cubase's MIDI is way better than Pro Tools. Um, you could also, I hate to say this, you could also look into Logic. Logic's MIDI is great, but I think Logic's recording and the way they do tracks is a train wreck, and I think it's hard to understand. So, pretend, pretend I didn't say that. Uh, what else we got? How do you align multiple vocal tracks? Tommy Valenko. Good question, Tommy. Um, two ways. Um, I, I look at all the transients and, uh, what I'll, what I normally do is I'll, I'll take one of them and time it to where I know that it sounds in the groove exactly how I want. And then if there's, 10 or 20 under that, or 30 or 40 or 50, I'll look at the transients of the one that I know that sounds perfect and align all those transients to that one. Or I'll do the same thing, get the first one all pocketed, feeling great, and I'll use vocal line to align to that one. 
Look up the plugin if you don't know about it, Vocal Line. It's V O C A L I G N. Um, it works better in Pro Tools than Cubase, not in its results, but much quicker in Pro Tools. You can still use it and get as, as good a results in Cubase, but there's a few other steps you have to take in Cubase to make it work. But well worth it, especially if you've got, you know, I mean, I've had some songs with 150 vocals. So either way, it takes a lot of time. If you can make vocal, vocal line work, do it. Um, Sinners Rise, thanks again for the answer. Feel free to swing by and check out some of this. I uh, snagged a mail record deal. I snagged a small record deal, and I'm slaving away. Fantastic. Go for it, man. Uh, Watson Studios, do you ever critique mixes? If we send them to you, yes, um, I do that. That's part of what is the doctor's lounge. Um, you can find the doctor's lounge. I've done a, a video about it, and you can find a uh, the the um, link in almost any video that I've done to the doctor's lounge, and it'll explain in there. And um, I would be happy to. I do tons of them a month, and. Um, we have a great time talking about them and critiquing, and um, I appreciate everybody who does it. Um, all right, uh, I'm pretty happy with Studio One. Yes, yeah, Studio One, I don't know as much about Studio One, but everybody that uses it loves it. So um, check out Studio One as well. Um, hey, I gotta jump. Let me wrap this up and tell you all uh, how thankful I am that you're on here this morning and everyone else that who watches it afterwards. Um, pay attention to the crutches in your music and the crutches in your life. Change some things up, even just for the sake of change, to see if it leads to something different or something better. If it doesn't, you can always go back to what to where you're at, um, with with no repercussions. But change up your mix template. Change up the way that you approach writing a song. Change up the way that your thought patterns are about stress or jealousy or um, taking time off, and. Take an inventory of how you approach everything in your life, music, life, family, friends, or whatever. And um, I think take an inventory and seeing the things that you may fall back on a little too much or the things that you fall back on that are healthy or the things that you fall back on that aren't healthy, um, are. Uh, I think that's a good exercise. I think it's a good exercise. And I need to remind myself to do that all the time. Also, Give yourself some slack. Cut yourself some slack, man. Music's fun. Life is beautiful. Um, go be a part of both. Have a great week. Check out the uh, Dr. Bob's Killer Kit. There's links in this video. There's links in the description of other videos. And um, I'll see you this week with another video and hopefully next Sunday. All right. Talk to you soon.